The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. I'm going to see completely different versions of what everybody... I love working with students. I can't believe I was so lucky to find this job uh, for myself so quickly in life that I can't imagine doing anything else. They are the most interesting people I will ever meet, every group that comes through, and I learn so much from them. Besides creating in the classroom, teaching her students at the University of Minnesota Morris, Jess Larson has been on a creative role regarding her own personal art. Over the past four years, she has created an amazing array of related pieces and each of them using technology both old and new. A computer, a computer printer, ink, and needle and thread. This particular series is about that kind of language attached to, some, to a woman that you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you're, if you're too passive, then people are critical about you not standing up for yourself and you're not taking advantage of the things that you need to do to be a modern woman. And then if you are gutsy and you are pushy about it, you get slammed because you are being, um, you're stepping outside of what you're supposed to be as, as a woman in society. And I'm not saying this is the way that it is for everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm working with the extremes to kind of highlight it in the middle. Jess Larson's needlework pokes fun at female place in Western society. Each panel contains a stereotyped image of an item associated with women in society, like these high-heeled shoes, and then combines it with a carefully chosen word. And then I, then I start thinking about, okay, what can I say that would insult the shoe? What is, what is about it that could be an insult, either as something passive or something aggressive? And I start taking kind of notes on it. And I decided the shoe was probably going to be a little bit more aggressive, especially a red high heel that's all pointy and stuff. It kind of implies like maybe a power woman, a corporate person. She gets most of her ideas from old magazines and by attending garage sales. I'm more attracted to the old objects because it's just because I kind of like that stuff personally. And I think a student or, or a young person looking at this work will feel a little bit safe to be, um, to kind of follow along that critical um, th thought process if it's not directly at them. Like I'll never make one about an iPod, for example, and I don't have anything attached to it. The same themes still exist, the same inequities are still there and especially if you pay attention to the language being used for a lot of women who are moving into higher levels of power and leadership it, it's it's really kind of scary and blatant so that's what the work is about not lost is the irony of jess larson's work describing the place of women from a sewing machine with painstaking attention paid to detail She's figured out a way to layer threads in the embroidery process, creating a physical depth to each piece. Computer software in the sewing machine helps direct her design. No, they're, they're beautiful, and the, and the embroideries actually get to be almost thick like cardboard, which isn't what you're supposed to do with this machine and this, and this stuff. I, I think I drove the people nuts that I bought the machine from for the first year that I was showing up with things saying, well, this is happening, isn't that weird? And they always said to me, you're not supposed to do that with the machine. And I'd say, but I did. And they'd go, oh, okay. And because you're not supposed to do 80, 90 color changes, apparently. Thinking about old things in new ways. I, I think I've been working with the same themes for more than 20 years, that they bubbled up as a student and I've, I've continued them. And I think the thing that I find interesting is that every time I finish a project, I have more questions. And that, that to me is a sign that I'm doing well, that every, every item begets five to six more questions that I can use to move on to the next set. Uh, my mom sews, I know people who knit, so, and then there's cooks. So it's like these things that women do were the things that distinguished them. And you could see them as oppressive, but I saw them as their, the things that they did that made them special and a way that they showed affection to other people to make somebody a pie, their special pie, is almost as good as a hug. 
in a way that they they put all this energy into it to make this thing and to get a handmade object for somebody is is really special. Jess Larson says the culture of her native western Minnesota provides the creative spark for all of her projects. Uh, leaving Minnesota was the easiest way to figure out all the things that made me who I am. When I went to graduate school in Colorado that I, I figured out really quickly the, the Minnesota port parts of myself that make, that make me kind of who I am and my family. I, I, live in a, I live in an area where I can still see my family, my extended family. My dad was one of 12 kids. I have 40 plus cousins on one side of the family and my mom's side's a little smaller but I saw those people. Um, I've, I saw my grandmother weekly and almost every day up until she died a few years ago at age 91. So I think, I think again in a society where people move all over the country, I, I may, I'm making work that is so much about being linked to a sense of one's personal history. And, and I think it's, it's a history that a lot of people don't always want to explore. It seems sort of mundane, but it was really important to me as a child. I learned a lot of the things that I know how to do by sitting at the kitchen table and watching grandmothers do the various things they do, from making bread to making something else or just handling their daily lives. They were my first feminist models. They never self-proclaimed as feminist models, but I saw them as the most powerful and interesting people I had ever met. And while serious about her work, Jess Larson hopes people will see the lighter side of it too. I hope they laugh a little bit. And, and I hope it's a laugh that they give themselves into first and giggle about it. But on the back side comes in this little thought of like, oh, oh, that's what she meant. So I like, I like humor that kind of is this entry point for a little bit something more serious. So there's a twist in it.